that's Gen up. Z. That's Generation Alpha. That's the new generation. That's all they ass. How you? Y'all wait. Everybody tap the screen. Tap the screen. Help me reach my live goal. Let's go. Let's go. Let's if get it. If it wasn't an iPhone, it was a it was a uh, iPod, an iPad. Listen, all this stuff been around. They talk about you ain't had it. Shit, iPods. People used to walk around with them. The Zooms. They make it seem like the shit wasn't back in the days. I had a cell phone in high school. A Nokia, uh, the, not the Nokia, but the Sony Ericsson with the big ass batteries in the back. I had one of them in 1998 in high school. So straight up and down. The shit they talk about, they're fucking lie. Like they had some, like this generation got something special that other generation. Yeah, motherfuckers ain't had the technology. They ain't a bit damn bit of this goddamn technology that they use today. Nothing. Corey, Corey, no, no, no. Corey, Generation X. They think they own shit. Generation Z. So now we in Generation Alpha, right? So Generation Alpha don't have nothing to do with Generation Z. So Man, gen- you better look at the age. You better look at the age ranges. So you Generation guys- Alpha is is Generation Alpha now is the one the kids that are coming out knowing how to work the iPads and all all the technologies. And, and what's the age range of the Alpha? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, hold on. Let me pull it up. What's the age range? I'm gonna pull it up right now. Okay, go ahead. Why she pulling it up? Things can still transfer generationally, regardless of what you're talking about, Corey. Things can still transfer generationally. The things that we pick up from our parents, our parents' parents, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm a millennial, but Gen Z, they're able to express themselves in different ways that Gen X and millennials and all that stuff, we couldn't do. I definitely was raised in a household of whatever's in my home stays in my home. And if I find out that you said anything else, is going to be a problem. I don't think that Gen Z and Alpha had to deal with that type of energy. And if they did, they still spoke out regardless because they're fed up, like T said. So Generation Alpha was born 20, 2010 to 2024. So Old next enough year, to be disrespectful. No, no. Hold on, wait, Corey. So Generation Better is going to be 2025. So Generation Alpha is 2010 to 2024. Gen Z is 1995 to 2009. Um, The Millennials is 1980 to 1994. Gen X is 1965 to 1979. And the Baby Boomers are 1946 to 1946 to 1964. So if we're going to talk about the little children right now, that's Generation Alpha. That's born in 2010. Generation and they Alpha. Disrespectful. The, Gen, the Gen Zs are disrespectful. Shit, you got little kids out here cursing grown folks out. Well, people don't teach their kids no goddamn manners. Let's be real about this goddamn shit. I'm not, I'm not uh, disagreeing with you. I will never How can they teach manners, you. though? How can they teach manners, though, if they don't technically have manners for other people either, though? Facts. We got to think about those things. Like, we can't just single out one particular party or group or generation, as we're talking about, and just say, hey, these are the people that are disrespectful. Boomers, Gen X, all types of parties involved are disrespectful. I'm going I'm to put it to you like this, yeah. right? I got two nephews that are Gen uh, Z, right? My oldest one, I, I I watched him when he was born. He was up under me. We not that far apart. We maybe like 12 years apart or whatever. But he still got the respect for me. I don't mind the cursing or whatever. We talk whatever, grown folk shit. But he got the respect for me as his mm-hmm. uncle. Or whatever, but his his other two brothers, nah, I press them little niggas in they shit. Hey y'all, because this is like- the restraint. They they act like they know every fucking thing, and the motherfuckers can't get get by in fucking life. Why I like little bitches? That's what I be talking about. That type of shit right there. You can't tell them shit. They got it all figured out. They don't want to learn nothing from nobody else. They don't see nothing. 
and then they disrespectful when they come like just in general the conversation be disrespectful like trying to talk down on the motherfucker who just talking to him i don't even talk to him i look at him and laugh See, my little nephew my little, hold on my little nephew 23 just like my son bitch can't even drive but Corey, you both of your you gotta be a big both of your children are Gen Z. So you have to keep in mind that both your son and daughter is in Gen Z. So you have to have an open mind for your children. Right. It, y'all, I want let me jump in here. I'm a I'm what a baby my boomer. Kids my, my, hold on, my kids are disrespectful. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, Corey. I'm a baby boomer. I'm in the last of the baby boomers. So I turned 60 this year. So it's, it, you know, every generation builds off the other one. Now, my kids are, my kids are millennials, right? And I have a granddaughter that's a Gen, with a Gen Z, and then I have two grandsons that are Gen Alphas, right? And like the, the, the Gen Zs, like they, they grew up with the with the rap game, and like my daughter, they you know listened to all the rap. So so these kids were in in a whole different ball game, and and it's all about how you raise them. That's what it comes down to. It's about how you raise them. It's about how you get in, involved with school and stuff with them. They look at what you do. And if you acting up, if you out there fighting in the street, and if you out there doing certain things, that's what the kids model. And that's why a lot of them are disrespectful. I mean, you, you have to look back at the parents. I don't think all the time it's the parents, though. I think that... No, no not, think all that, the not all the time. Yeah. But I a lot that, of times, you, you have to look at the parents. Because most things start at home. I agree with that. I agree with that. But I think that in the world we are in, we parents are up against some real parents are up against a different monster, right? Um, and I, I'm saying this from an educator perspective, right? Not just from a parent perspective. You have social media, peers, outside influences, like well, outside influence is that, but like other other influences. It's so many factors that kids are up against today that a lot of us wasn't up against growing up. But T, so this is- parental, Hold on, hold on one second. Parental influence isn't really as big at, parental influence is big, but there, but it's not as strong as the outside influences. And those outside influences, that shit is something that you gotta really like, it's hard to pull your kids in and back from them outside influence. Like you really got, you got to build them for it. And I think that what building them for it is preparing them for reality. I think that one thing that I don't like about the um, new generation and even the millennials is we don't live in reality. We live in what it should be. It shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't happen this way versus the way it happens. And I think that we're, we, we do each other and our children a disservice when we talk about what it should be like versus what it actually is. So with that, we set them up for failure because we're not we're not living in reality with them. Look, this is the way the world is right now. I got to prepare you for the world, not what the world should be, but what the world is right now. And we're not doing that. I don't think people are doing that with their kids. I don't think we're doing that with ourselves. I think we live in this delusion. Come on. We live in this delusion of a world of what it should be, what it could be, what it would be, versus what the fuck it is. And that influence in itself is really, really, really more detrimental to our kids than, than any other influence could be. Come on, Gizzy. I, I look at it this way, T. If I'm, if I'm the parent of teenagers, and I spend a lot of my time on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and I'm in my phone or in my iPad, I'm not seeing what my kid is doing. That's true. I'm, I, don't know, I don't know what my kid is doing in their bedroom. And that's how the kids 
get that's how these these outside influences grab our kids especially our black step kids. outside of the um step outside of social media right and your phone if you're in the kitchen cooking you don't know what your kid doing if you are at work you don't know what your kid doing. Right. However, oh, however, the way is that we're going to step away from our kids and we're not going to know what they're doing because guess what? Our kids ain't under us 24-7. Right. So even when but, you go to sleep, but, you ain't going to know what your kid right. doing. But, listen, but right? listen, from right, when I ra- was in the time when I raised my kids, we didn't have all this. Right. I didn't you have have all this. right. So right? now you have to, that's what I'm saying. I think the problem is you're, we're speaking on something that you didn't experience, right? So what I, happens well, is with the new the new generation is you adapt to it but and you it, realize okay you gonna keep this to me go ahead but I want you to understand my daughter died nine years ago okay I, I want you to understand that I was talking to me a second and I helped my son in law raise my grandchildren my granddaughter lived with me right and you 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 have to you have to get involved with your kid you gotta get involved with them because we all know there's these outside influences we know for boys how gangs and all this stuff is in, in like we know we know these things that are out there so we have to make a conscious effort to okay, get Mocha, give me a second give me a second oh go ahead Ms. what you Mocha, saying right now what you saying right now what you saying right now I'm, I'm sorry to say this like this is bullshit and i'm gonna tell you why it's bullshit because back in the day when we didn't have social media influences Kids was outside doing shit that their parents ain't know what the fuck they was doing. They was at school doing shit that their parents didn't know what the fuck they was doing. Without it, without social media and shit, people were still doing shit they had no business doing. Because why? Parents couldn't always be there. So these kids were sneaking out windows, sneaking out the house when their parents were asleep. They were still finding ways. It's easier now. But they were still doing that shit. But you know what was happening with your age generation? Y'all was hiding that shit. Y'all was y'all was sitting there. Your daughter would be fourteen and pregnant, so you would let the auntie claim that that's the baby. I'm the baby mama. You know y'all 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 hid that shit. Y'all swept shit under the rug. So what y'all, what 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 fears the new gener the old generation for this generation is shit is out in the open and you get to see that shit and y'all doing like this like that never happened why because y'all hid shit y'all was used to sweeping shit under the rug y'all was listening hiding shit in the closet y'all was like acting like y'all don't see shit why can't like shit ain't happening so then that's why y'all sit here and say well we wasn't like this because y'all was trained to say I don't see it I don't hear it, I don't know what the fuck you talking about uh uh-uh, uh my pastor ain't touched that kid uh uh-uh, uh my daddy ain't over there um jumping in the bed with my sister uh-uh my my mama ain't over there throwing up and, and, and sleeping in her throw up or doing that uh-uh my daddy didn't hit my mama because 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 my mama said what goes on in our house stay in our house so that's why y'all walk around here thinking we didn't have to deal yes y'all did y'all did y'all just hid that shit now we have a way that you can see it everything is in the open it's not hidden anymore Ain't nothing changed but time. More access, more resources, more ways to see it. That shit ain't, this shit ain't new. None of this shit is new. I'm not willing to be silent. And I think that bothers the older generation. The, the, the new generation is just not willing to just shut up and be quiet and, 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 and go into a corner. And that's just what it is. And I, I respect it. I respect it. I think what they're doing now, it can be uh, deemed as doing too much as the older generation, but let's be for real. I wish as a millennial, the things that I know now, I would have done just like they're doing now, speaking of and advocating for themselves. Because if your parents aren't in the home advocating for you, then you need to step up and advocate, period. And that's why I said to Corey, that's why I said to Corey that it's generational. A lot of times our grandparents and our great grandparents, they shut, they, they was not saying shit about the shit that was going on. And so now when things transcend throughout generations, they're trying to break the cycle now. And I appreciate it because what we was doing back then was not okay. And if people are afraid to admit that, then that is a you problem. Because so the world me, is still ever changing. Period. Then I get fired deep. So let me say this: um, there ain't nothing new under the sun. Let's just call it what it is. Um, this generation today, they did that, 
back in the 60s. They spoke out in the 60s, spoke out in the 70s. Every generation has spoken out. Every generation has done X, Y, and Z. The one before has talked about the one after. The one after has talked about the one before, blaming them. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't nobody doing nothing different. Let's call it what it is. No one's doing anything differently. We just, no one's deciding to change what they see is a new generation. They're gonna do what they wanna do and they're doing the same thing that all of your, all of us did. They're not doing anything no differently. They ain't doing nothing, nothing at all. They, what, what, what are they doing today that wouldn't happen in the 90s? That wouldn't happen in the early 2000s? What? Mimi, are, 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 are I think, only part, you know, Mimi, I think they more hold rebellious. On, hold on, hold on Sadari, let me finish my thought and I'll let y'all have it. The only part that you can sit here and say that they are doing that they have and it's the access to technology which gives them the access to the world that is it and the, and the funny part about it is they have access to the world and they're doing a doggone thing with it that's the scary part too the access to the world because it's so much they they don't even realize people got access to them that they don't even know you know what i'm saying that i part. think that's the scary part about it um hold on my daughter calling me i'm um i need i'm finna do something in a minute i need y'all to tap the screen Give me a second. Let me get this call. Okay. Mimi, what I'm going to say, I think that they more rebellious today. I listen to a lot of Gen, Gen Z. I even listen to my children. Both of my kids are in Gen Z, right? I listen to them. I listen to them talk. I listen to them vent to me. And you know what my, my, my grandmother said to me? Oh, you giving them too much of a platform. No, I'm giving them a chance to speak their feelings. And then they say, and my grandmother said, oh, you, you opening up a door for disrespect. I don't think I'm opening up a door for disrespect. I think that I'm opening up, open up a door for transparency. I want to know how they feel. I want to know what's going through their minds. I, especially my oldest. Does she have a fucking baby? Mm -hmm. She has a baby. And the funny, and the funny part about it is, Sadari, is that the exact same thing that your grandma told your mom is the exact same thing that my grandmama told my mom about me. But it's, I, there's I nothing new with it, though. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Are we trying to? Are we trying to resolve something? Or are we just? I mean, are we discussing the differences? I'm really trying to understand so, what our goal is. The thing with is, the conversation. About we, there ain't no goal. It ain't no goal. It's about the conversation. No goal, we were talking about healing. Yeah, there, there's no goal. We were talking about um, healing, and we got here, and it's just an open dialogue at this point. Um, and it's okay to, I think it's okay to have an open dialogue at this point. Yeah, it, it is. I was, I was yeah, just it ain't no, it ain't no objective here tonight. It's not tonight, um, because we were talking about something, and then we got to this. Um, so we haven't. It's just, it's just really an open discussion right now. Because I got a Gen A here, y'all can come get. Y'all won't. Right. I got a Gen A here, y'all can come get. Nini, like, I the conversation been good for the last couple hours, though. I had to reset the live because I got a restriction. But How did this, you I need to get back that because people be reporting me. Like people, every time I get online, I get reported. So I had to reset the whole live. Um, but we got away from these conversations. We used to have these conversations all the time. Um, the healing, all that shit. I think we definitely have gotten away from it. So when we get back into this, it should be good, man. It'd be it'd be good to get back here. Um, but so what can we first win? person that pull up at the gas station, turn their camera on. I got uh $25 for you. Go ahead, Nene. Oh, snap, for real? Hold on. Wait a minute. God damn it. Can you put gas in my car early? I need to go fill up my truck, too. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm about to go I mean, jump all out. Y'all, everybody that needs one. to go get some gas, drop out the panel, and then let her pick y'all one out the panel because we don't need a disaster, y'all. <laughs> it'd be good over here. My life oh, okay. ain't um, as hectic like Diamond. You know, Diamond live be, it'd be, it'd be hectic, though. I don't think it be Diamond and Nietzsche. Nietzsche's was crazy at 2 o'clock yeah. in the morning. At, no, yeah. at 2 o'clock last night, Look at 2 o'clock in the morning. That shit was crazy at 2 o'clock. I'm at the gas station already. Turn that camera on. You better turn that camera on. No, no, nah, I'm good. You can give it to somebody else. I'm at the somebody gas station. Somebody donated $100. Morning. I gave 50 <laughs> away earlier today. I'm giving 50 away today. Bless somebody. Bless somebody else, T. Thank you, though. Bless Winston. Winston, you gonna bless me when she bless you. <laughs> I 
That's greedy, Nene. That ain't greedy. That's no. Go, no. Do it. Do it the right way. <laughs> That's the right way. They're already. Do it the right way. See, do they have a certain time to get to the um to the gas station? They, oh, y'all got ten minutes to get to the gas station. It's it's eight fifty seven her time, nine fifty seven Eastern Standard Time. Why is that okay? Go ahead and get it, y'all. We, we had two hundred. We had two hundred people right now, so it ain't that bad. Oh, like if it was two thousand people up here right now, oh. it'd be real hectic. See, while they get to the gas station, can we continue the conversation? Are you yeah. okay with that? Yeah. Okay, Nene, I agree with what you're saying because I do. I listen to my grandparents and I listen to my mother and my father and stuff like that. I do know that they spoke on behalf of what they were feeling at the time. Mm -hmm. What I think is is our deficit in just all the generations that we're not able to just listen and find solution. Um, I would love if we were able to find solution. All of us are always talking about these things, but nobody has ever really came up with a solution. I, I think those I've been giving that, solutions for the last. I've been giving solutions for the last two years, and I can give you a simple one right now. You want to hear it? Yes. I want to hear it. Yeah. All right. Live and let live. No, uh, we don't want to hear it until T resolve her issue with her daughter in this last uh, situation. No, what issue with my daughter? What you over here being messy for? You wonder if you talking about you went and seen the house, but you don't think it's enough of space because it is that and the third. So you got to resolve that because you got to what? Gen Z in the house or whatever? I, that ain't nothing to resolve. That's no, 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 no. I see an issue there. That's um, okay. You yeah. see an issue there. I don't see an issue there. I mean, we it's a no. Hold on, um, see, I see an issue that Corey, you don't feel the need to have an open dialogue with your children. I'm we, I mean, we honest. already decided we're not right. gonna move in the house. Here. What the hell you okay, mean? so why are you dictating your children? Let me though? say the solution. Okay. Meet people where they are. I've always said Fact. this. We putting our expectations on other people will never work it's not a generational thing it's not a human it's not an age thing it's not a, a um, gender thing it's a it's circum it's a person to person and my and when we when we um when we was training for um teach um when we have our teacher trainings um they have this thing it's called the individual child right and in that training it talks about the individual child and what that means is we don't treat the children like a group. We treat we treat we treat the child by their individual character, personality, and situation, right? So the way I would treat Nini, I'm not gonna treat Ejoy. Y'all are two different people, right? So you treat children as individuals. You meet them where they are. This child may need may have these needs. This child has these needs. They can both come up in the same home, be raised the same way, and have different needs. They can have different emotional issues. They can have different um, um, peer peer issues. They have different. So you don't treat them like, well, when I was young, this is how that went. You have to. You first of all, we ain't we ain't in the era when you was young. We're in this era now. They're not living in your era. So when you was young, things happened like this. You weren't in the same era. So you have to at least meet them where they are in the era that they're in and the circumstances that they are in and the situations that they are in. And I think adults refuse to do that with youth because you have this respect me, respect me, I don't have to respect you mindset. If you want to reach the kids, you have to meet them where they are. I have no issue with youth. I have no issue with youth. You know why? Because I treat them like people. I treat them like individual people. You, they, you respect me, I respect you, we respect each other. And with the way you can get to a youth is you start off by respecting them. Talk to them, t talk to them, team. Keep. I agree. I agree. 100%. I agree with you 100%. I, I agree disagree. with that. But that's why I said earlier, if we would just give a moment to give grace to each other and listen and hear each other out, especially the younger generation. We have to start humanizing our parents. 
we have to start humanizing the younger generation because we're all just people. We can't like possess each other. We just can't. It doesn't work like that. We have to be able to meet each other where you where we're at, like you said, and be able to understand without judgment. And it's hard to not have judgment on certain uh, certain circumstances, but that's a part of the conversation, right? Hearing people and seeing each other and listening. I'm not gonna hold y'all. A lot of times, the kids that I see, the struggles that they have is because they're not being heard by their parents. A lot of times when I work with the families, it's because the families are not being heard by their child. And so there's always a, a, a back and forth, a back and forth, a back and forth. How can we come to a conclusion to where we can meet in the middle and there's a sound, sounding ground and a safe haven where everybody can feel safe, everybody can feel heard, and everybody can feel okay with the opinions of the other, even though the generation is different. We have, we have to break the curse of the generational trauma. It's not about the generational trauma, right? So it is. It is. it's like what E. Joy is saying, because I, I come from, and I, like I said, like I don't really want to- We said that earlier though, Sadari, that, it, that is one of the issues that it right. is part so, of it. And it's right. No, I, I it's, it's absolutely right. I think that a lot of, and I said it, a lot of Gen X don't want to hear what's going, not all, but majority, don't want to hear what the millennials are saying. So when Gen Z is being disrespectful to Gen X, then it leaves the millennials in the middle because most of us are the parents of, of Gen Z. And then it's like, damn, do I defend my, my parent or do I defend my child? But this is where the trauma comes in at, in the middle. I'm gonna say this, the way y'all been pushing the buck, I mean, these kids don't have no respect. If we look at the, the structure of a Native American Because they're not respected. They don't have no respect because they're not respected. They are no, no, I, I, I was gonna say something to you anyway, because we gonna, we gonna handle something you said initially. You said you can't learn from nobody younger than you, from no youth. And that's where right there, I, I feel like there's a disconnect, and, and, I'm, and I'm gonna tell you why. I've learned from two-year-olds. As a grown-ass woman, I have learned from a two-year-old. I'm gonna give you a lesson I learned from a two-year-old. It's choices, right? I remember there was this two-year-old boy, it was a white boy. He was, can y'all mute if y'all not talking, please? Are you at the gas station, Miss O? Um, if you come up in with the gas station thing, just turn your camera on so I know. Um, hold on a second. I probably shouldn't have continued the conversation. Um, it was a two-year-old boy. He got in trouble. Okay, you're at the gas station. Um, he got in trouble. He was angry, right? And he ended up, hold on. Can you mute your mic, baby? I see you. At the, I see you. I'm finna put my cash app up for you. Okay. He yeah, got in trouble. Just request it for me real quick. And we got in trouble. You know, he got redirected, talked to or whatever. And he was still mad, right? And I'm like, okay, you know, you can come out. You can, you know, let's play. He was like, I don't want to play. I'm mad. I was like, why are you mad? Like, you don't have to be mad anymore. Like, oh, uh, come on. You should be happy. Like, and he said, I want to be angry. He said, I want to be angry. I want to be. And you know what he taught me? That sometimes people choose. They choose to want to stay in their emotion. They choose a two-year-old taught me something and it's true a lot of times we choose to stay angry be angry we choose to be sad to be bitter 
We choose these things because that's where we want to stay. And and I learned that from a two-year-old. A two-year-old taught me that. You can learn from younger people. You ain't nothing. It's, it's never nobody you can't learn from. I'll pass. Thank you. Go ahead and pass. You go, but you stubborn. You ain't gonna. I, I, I'm just saying. Anyway. It, they, they like, like uh, I know Sadar was trying to say because I'm a truck driver and stuff like, like this. I guarantee you, most of the technology that my kids mess with and know about is from me. I was just sitting here the other day telling T what she need for that goddamn broken ass hard drive she got over there. My hard drive ain't broke. You did say you had some hard drive. No, I did not. Broke. I said or my whatever. flash drive was broke. See, that's why I say you don't want to learn because you don't want to listen anyway. Man, I didn't say, say my hard, hard drive, drive, drive was broke. I didn't say my hard drive Wait, was broke. That external hard drive, that white shit. That white the hard that drive was. is not broke. It is not well, broke. I, I thought you that that what you pulled up. So shoot. I said That's an email. Hard drive. I no, I was giving an example. I said oh, okay. email your stuff to yourself because hard drives, flash drives, stuff does break. So if you email the stuff to yourself, you don't have to worry about if something gets broke and it can't get fixed, you not being able to have access to your shit. So it's best if you're writing a book, you're writing something, you're doing a document, you write doing report cards, email it to yourself so you will always have access of it. That's what I was saying. I didn't say my hard drive. Oh, was I, I thought it. I thought it was. I broke, know because you don't I, listen. I, well, well, it's what you said. My thing about it. He was too busy fighting in the comments that night with you. That's what it was. <laughs> Probably was you were probably harassing me, but a lot of this stuff. I just I sent to Nikki. I didn't. I didn't put my hands and stuff on in life. Did you get so, it, Nikki? I mean, what these crybabies cry about? I yes, they cry about not like rich. We know inflation goes up. They cry about jobs. Stop choosing the same shit everybody else choosing. Because they capping it at a certain point. They cry about a lot of stuff. You see Nick, uh, Nene next to me. Nene make a lot of money. She'll be a good sugar mama to somebody. Figure it out. Start working together. I had roommates when I got out. A lot of y'all say these kids go through stuff that y'all ain't going through. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Y'all say a lot of these kids. And I live next to one of the breeds. Listen. Listen, we stay in her house and now, bitch, we done upgraded. Up, up. okay, a lot my... of y'all women, a lot of y'all women been out since the ages of 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. This, these kids of this generation, they living in your household till they 25, 30 years What's old. What's wrong with that? Gotta... Corey, no, the economy no, is no, hard no, right no, now. No, Are you let crazy? Me talk. Let me talk. No, hell, let hell me, no. Because what's wrong with talk. that? No, 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 no. no. What's wrong yeah, with no, that? No, White no, people do that. Hispanics do that. Asians do that. Y'all ain't even let me Indians finish. Indians do that. Y'all ain't even problem? let me finish. Y'all ain't even let me finish. How can y'all say these kids go through something and they had it easier until they upper 20s? They mid 20s. You give them a better chance at life and they Corey, you like can't the raise kids. the kids now, how you was how you, how you was raised i got another solution i got another solution for that Kari. so let's let's meet let's meet in the middle right i don't believe in putting your kids out at 18 nights now i'm gonna work with my daughter because she in school it. wait she in school um but what i do think is if you do let your kid if your kid is staying today 2025 you still set them up for success by preparing them for the real world, right? So, yeah, it's okay when you stay here till you to your 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 stable, right? But you still gotta pay rent, right? So I'm gonna make you pay two two hundred dollars for that room, right? And then you gotta go maybe ten percent on the the utilities, and you're responsible for your own gas and your own life. I'm not missing your point. I'm giving a solution. I'm literally giving a solution to what you're saying. Your kid can stay with you 
until they're the problem is the no matter what age we're putting them out we're not preparing them for the world prepare them for the world that's my point but I, I don't i don't care about your point i'm giving a solution to what you're saying yes people are kids are staying in 2025 but if you're gonna let your kids stay to 2025 give them responsibility so when they get out when they leave they're prepared that's what I'm saying. It's nothing wrong with your kids staying till they're 2025, 20, even 30. If they ain't got, if they, if they respectful and you got the space, if you got a big ass house, this is why I ain't buying no house. Okay. What was your point, Kari? What was your point? My point was, like I said, most of you people that are, are Gen X's and millennials, y'all been off the porch, been out the house from a younger age. So whenever y'all didn't have the opportunity, if somebody would have sheltered y'all and kept y'all, we as Gen Z, Gen X's and millennials would have probably had a better chance at even what we did. But we've been out the house or got pushed out the house at some point in time and said, you got to go get it. That's what all I'm saying. But these kids now that are raised by the Gen X's and the millennials, Oh, baby, you can stay to you whenever you feel like you're ready. So that was that. your point. What I and said. they still. That was your no, point. No, so, no, okay, you, you're no, saying you're that you're saying that we had. Okay, but I'm giving a solution to your point. Your point is we're not. We, you just said we're not pushing them into the world to go get it. Okay, don't push them into the world to shell shock them. No, don't shell shock your kids. But set them up for when you do push them out. They're prepared. And that's just no, that's just it though. That's just it though. Hey, with your other ethnicity, you so no, Corey, because you, 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 you talk, you talking crazy. No, you not. No, but that's what, that's, what that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. A lot of other ethnicities set their children up. A lot of ethnicities set their children up. I'm not putting with another point. I'm giving a solution to the point. The point is, they're not putting their kids out. They're not putting. They're not making them go through anything. So my point is. Give it balance. That's what my point is. Because let's go there. The younger, when we were kicked out at 17, 18, we was with grown-ass men. A lot of us was in abusive-ass relationships with men that was financing us, fucking, fucking us, treating us like shit. And guess what? Y'all didn't even know what y'all kids was going through when you pushed them out into the world because they was in a whole nother world of fuck shit. So you looking at them like they was responsible, but they were figuring out how to survive and they were end up settling for shit that they didn't have to settle for. Okay, now, and it makes them hard. Chief, can I say this? Now we are. Chief, can I say this? Hold on, wait. Corey, Corey, let me say this, right? My oldest child is a girl. She's 22. She has a baby, but she's also a court officer. When she turned 18 and when she graduated out of high school, she told me she wasn't going to college. But I told her she wasn't going to be a bum. You know what I did? I made sure she applied to take every New York City and New York State exam, right? Even if I had to pay because she had a job and she wasn't willing to pay. I paid for that. And right now at 22, she's a court officer with a nine-month-old baby and lives in a low income building. You think I give a fuck about what these people are gonna say? I don't give a fuck about what nobody gonna say. But guess, but guess what? what? I did my part as her mother. So now as my 16 year old, I have a different child. She's in a different space. She wants to work. You know what she say? Mommy, I don't like the way Shay Shay made us feel. Right? So now I have a 16 year old that has a whole different ambition. Same parenting, two different children. So you cannot say, you cannot say that. So now, and I have two children that's in Gen Z, and I am a millennial parent when my mother was a Gen X and she had me at 16, and I have two children that's willing to do the work. So again, you have to rephrase that statement. You can learn. I learned from both of my children, my 22-year-old and my 16-year-old, because I asked them questions. You know why? 
because I don't know everything. And I'm okay with being 39 and not knowing everything. Right. Hello. And the Hello. thing Give is, me one second. Can I do a triple tap? Oh, can we get to 100K within the next five minutes? And can we get in the next 20, 15 minutes, can we get 15 money guns? That's it. That opens up a whole nother realm of a conversation, right? Because they want the 18, 19, 20-year-olds to just have it all together. They don't. They're still young. They're still kids. They're still learning. And so when I speak about other ethnicities, I know people don't like to j jump on these conversations, but it's true. A lot of these other ethnicities will let them kids and allow their kids to fall and pick themselves back up and fall, pick themselves back up again and live in their homes just to learn so they'll be able to venture out on their own and do what they need to do. Also, I know so many people that I went to school with in my senior year, because that's a whole nother conversation, but in my senior year where it was a lot of white people that had no idea about what the fuck was going on out there, their, their parents was telling, teaching them about stocks at 16 years old. Why are we being taught that as black people at our ages? And that is okay. a lot of the problem. So when we try to talk about these things, we have to also be realistic. And that's just it. I, I understand where you at, Corey, because my father, he's a Haitian man. Let me tell you something. He's a Haitian man. My great grandfather, they was very proud. But it's a big thing to listen to your children when they need to be heard, and that's just it. Of course, it's just so what you here. <laughs> Rent is $2,500 out here. What 18 year old is able to pay that type of rent? The cost of living has gone up, meaning this housing used to only be 20, 25% of your income when I was 18 and 19 and 20 years old. Now it's almost 50% of your income and the income has not gone up with meaning that income has not followed the uh, uptick in rise and cost of goods at all. So that's where we are today. It takes two and three people in a household to even pay. Like if you purchase a home. So you can't just put your child out there at 18 years old with nothing. That's not even reasonable. It's not reasonable. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was not, not my statement. statement. And, and not, not my conversation. But maybe Kari, you lost. Wait, 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 what's that called? Kari, maybe you lost. And I'm going to say why I'm saying it. Because it seems like you the only one people not understanding where you're coming from. So it, maybe you have a bad way of communicating what you're saying.